Hi again, everyone. This is Kathy from House of TOEFL, and today we are going to talk about speaking task one. This has been updated for 2020. From what I'm hearing from students, there are now three main types of speaking tasks for prompt one that you are likely to get. The first one, which is by far the most common, is whether or not you agree or disagree with a statement they give you. Here is an example. Do you agree or disagree with the following statement? People should always be honest with their friends. The second most common is the paired choice. In that one, they will ask you a choice between two lifestyles or two activities or two things you could do on the weekend. It could really be anything, but here's a quick example. Some people prefer to communicate with text messages. Others prefer to make phone calls. Which method of communication do you prefer and why? This question often uses the verb prefer, believe, like, or enjoy. Some people prefer X, other people prefer Y, which do you prefer, and so on. There's a huge variety of topics they can ask you about, so be prepared to speak on many things. The third one I've been hearing has been more popular lately, and I call this the good idea prompt. This gives you a scenario and asks you whether or not it's a good idea. So here's an example. Your university has decided to allow eating in class. Do you think this is a good idea? Now, while you are speaking, the prompt will remain on the screen and so will the timer. And the timer will count down. So here's some important facts about task one. You have only 15 seconds to prepare, so not a lot of time. You have 45 seconds to speak. You should say between six sentences and eight sentences to give a full response. The best method that I've found is to develop on two ideas and give an example of each, more on that later. If you can't think of specific examples, you can also expand by using more details. And I personally recommend useful phrases rather than relying on templates for independent tasks. So the question I get all the time is, well, how do I think of ideas? So here are a few tips for you. The first tip is to argue the side that's easier to defend. It doesn't necessarily have to be your position. Remember, the ETS doesn't really care what your opinion is about these. So whichever one is easier and you can think of more ideas for, then I say go for that one. Don't worry about what your real position is. Use your imagination. So try to create ideas. You could create uh, that something happened to your cousin, even though it didn't. You could say there was a study done, even though there was no study done. Anything that defends your position. The third tip is lie. Now I've seen before that people say, don't lie because your ideas are better when you keep to the truth. But I find the truth really, really confines you. It really doesn't give you enough space to say what you could really say if you allowed yourself to lie. Personally, I constantly lie when I record answers. I might say I have an eight-year-old daughter, which I don't, or I might say my 12-year-old niece, which I don't have. I can make up anything because they'll never check whether or not what I'm saying is true. And the same goes for studies. If you say there was a study in the New York Times that proved my position, they're never going to check the archives of the New York Times. So please feel comfortable to lie. It will give you a lot more room, a lot more space where you can think of things. It doesn't matter if they're true. Now, the next point is vocabulary. I cannot stress this enough. Students tell me, I can't think of anything to say, but I could do this in my home language. Usually that means the person's vocabulary in English is not quite where it should be for taking a test like the TOEFL. So before you take the TOEFL, you should already have a good vocabulary. My next tip is to visualize the scene. What I mean by that is picture it in your head so you can add details. So let's say you're talking about a vacation you want to go on and you like to go abroad rather than stay in your own country. Then picture all the things you could see if you were in a city like Paris, such as the Louvre or the Eiffel Tower. So try to picture things in your mind and visualize them, and then you can describe them. And the last thing is what I tend to do is pretend there's a young child who's four years old or five years old. 
next to me asking me more questions. So we all know children love to ask questions. They ask, why? What do you mean? How? Pretend there's a little child next to you asking you all these questions and you have to answer them. So then you just answer them into your microphone. All right, now I talked about useful phrases earlier. As I said, I don't like to rely on templates. So these are the types of useful phrases that will help you get through this answer and build a structure. So for the agree, disagree prompt, the first thing you could say is, I agree with the statement that and repeat the statement. Now, I want to say a word of caution here. If you are a slow speaker and it will take you 15 seconds to repeat the statement, then don't repeat it. Simply say, I agree with the statement for several reasons. If you're a faster talker, such as myself, I actually can repeat the statement. It only takes me five or six seconds, but this is something you have to decide for yourself. If it's going to take you 15 seconds, don't do it. You are marked on your content. You're not marked highly for repeating the statement. So if you can get through it fast, feel free to repeat it. Then here's a few phrases you can use when answering for several reasons or for two reasons. As I said earlier, I recommend developing two reasons. First of all, for example, second of all, for instance, other phrases you can use are additionally, moreover, in addition, furthermore. Now, useful phrases for the paired choice prompt. You can start by conceding the opposite. What that means is admitting some people don't agree. Although some people prefer to stay at home on the weekends, I prefer to go out on the weekends, for instance. Um, then you can say for several reasons or for two reasons, just like the previous prompt. First of all, for example, second of all, for instance, and additionally, moreover, in addition, furthermore. Of course, you'll notice these are very similar to the previous prompt. For the good idea prompt, you can start with, in my view, personally, I think, I believe that, give the situation, I believe that allowing eating in class is a good idea because, or is not a good idea because, and then simply use the useful phrases from the previous prompts. So for two reasons, for several reasons, for example, for instance, additionally, and so on. Now, a little information here about timing. You should only spend about 22 seconds on each idea. So remember, there's two ideas you're going to develop. Each idea should take about 22 to 23 seconds, okay? No more. So for example, if your first idea and its development go to 39 seconds, then you're in trouble. You wanna keep it around 22 to 25, something around there. If you have time left at the end, only if you have time left, say some sort of conclusion, such as that's why I feel that way. You may also add a more complex conclusion that refers back to the main idea of the prompt, such as that is why I think it's a good idea to allow eating in class. Now, no, a conclusion will not impact your score. What I mean is it's not going to give you bonus points. On the other hand, it's not going to take away points, which is why I recommend only concluding if you have five or six seconds left you don't want to leave empty space, but you also don't want to feel like you have to have a conclusion because you don't. The only times I give a conclusion is when I see that timer still has five seconds left on it. There's no time for me to add another example, so I just add a conclusion. Now, of course, you have to get used to the 45 seconds, so always practice with a timer. If you're still talking when the 45 seconds is over, don't worry, it will not impact your score as long as you have given a full response. Now, how am I scored? This is important. I'm always surprised so many students don't actually know what the TOEFL IBT is looking for. And if you don't know what they're looking for, you cannot give them the response they want. So let's go over the scoring criteria. This is the criteria developed by the ETS. And you can also find this online. Just look up the rubric for speaking for TOEFL. Okay, so according to the ETS, to get a four out of four, you must meet the following criteria. First, they go over what it looks like in general. I'm sorry, what it sounds like in general. In general, your response should be full, complete, and sustained. It should be easy to understand, and it should be coherent. So your speaking is clear. They can understand everything you say. You use transitional devices well. Second is your delivery. 
So your flow is well paced. You're not speaking too slowly, but you're not rushing through it. I find when people rush, they sound very robotic, like a robot, and that's not good intonation. So keep a regular pace. The way I'm speaking now is a really good pace. Then you need good pronunciation and good intonation. And don't underestimate that. Pronunciation is very important. And language use is another thing the ETS looks at. They want you to have effective grammar and effective vocabulary. So that means that your vocabulary is appropriate. You're using idioms correctly if you choose to use an idiom. Your vocabulary is accurate. And as far as grammar goes, you need to have both simple and complex grammar in your answer. So, for example, some people answer the question constantly using the simple present. They learn the simple present first. It's what they're most comfortable with. But most of the time, you need a lot more flexibility than that. You need to be able to use the simple past, the future, many other different types of grammar forms. So I recommend picking up a grammar book. I really like English Grammar in Use by Raymond Murphy. I find that to be an amazing book. I used it when I was a teacher in a school. For four years, I used that book. Fantastic. Um, and topic development, your response has to be sustained. That means you are continually speaking without a lot of mm, uh, without a lot of gaps where you're not saying anything. And sufficient to the task, that means you've answered the task fully. The relationship between ideas must be clear. And again, we're going back to these transitional devices, in addition, moreover, and so on. These will show that the relationship uh, is clear to the listener. Now, just some quick tips for success. Just generally speaking, you need to understand the TOEFL takes time. There is no secret. Sometimes students say to me, Kathy, just tell me what the secret is. The truth is I don't have a secret and neither does anyone else. It's really mostly the secret is practicing. Now, students don't like that answer, but that's the most honest answer. Practice, practice, practice makes perfect. Do not ignore grammar. Some students have actually said to me, but Kathy, grammar doesn't matter, right? Wrong. Grammar is very important in the writing and the speaking. Your grammar is definitely tested. So definitely do not just ignore it and forget to study it. It's very important. Be prepared to discuss a variety of topics. Some students ask me what topics are they going to ask me about so I can get ready and prepare an answer. The truth is I don't know and neither does anyone else. The ETS is constantly creating new questions and they have become very creative in the last few years. I've seen questions about setting up a human colony on the ocean or on Mars and this is not something you would ever expect. So you never know what they're going to ask you about. You have to be ready to talk about things outside of your usual comfort zone, outside of children, jobs, vehicles, and friendships. You have to be ready to, to talk about a variety of things. And that comes with practice and that comes with vocabulary. And that brings me to my next point. Of course, expand your vocabulary. Um, that's true for every section of the TOEFL, so I always say it and I will keep saying it. Uh, practice a lot. I talked about that earlier. Practice makes perfect. Um, you can find a speaking partner if you uh, need one. You can always post in my Facebook group that you're looking for a speaking partner. There's more than 30,000 people in there and it grows every day. So you're sure to find someone if you post what kind of person you're looking for. If you're looking for a fellow pharmacist or a dentist or a nurse, Whatever the case may be in your case, you can post some things there. I always approve posts where someone's looking for a partner. And then ask for help if you need it. Uh, if you need to get lessons or take classes, please uh, don't, don't hesitate. Uh, you can contact me through my website. I do give tutoring lessons. I can be reached at www.houseoftofel.com in the contact us part of my website. And uh, thank you for watching this video. This is my first time using PowerPoint. Hopefully everything goes smoothly and feel free to comment below. And of course, always feel free to reach out to me. I'm again, I'm Kathy from House of TOEFL. And as I always say, good luck on your test.